So the warm weather is finally upon us and I'm covered in dirt, slathered in sunscreen, and coated in bug spray. The walled garden has taken center stage as we've been busy creating new borders for the beds and wondering what to do with these. So we didn't even discover these bones sticking out of the wall until maybe a month after we were living here. They kind of blend in so you don't notice them unless you're up close. But uh, there are hundreds of bones that go down the length of the wall. And needless to say, I was a bit freaked out uh, upon discovering them. I had never seen anything like this. My first thought was, oh gosh, there's, there are human bones here. Someone has been doing a human sacrifice and where did I move to? <laughs> and I quickly realized they weren't human bones. There had to be a logical explanation. So these are actually sheep bones that are inserted into the wall and held in with mortar. Some of them are coming out now with, with all the, um, the weather and the age. And they use them for trellising or espalier. So they would grow plants and, and trees against the wall. I'm assuming because the stone retains the heat and the plants are happy. I tend to do that with my tomato plants because this part of the world is very damp and sometimes chilly in the summertime. So my tomatoes love the warmth of the wall and they get the sun. So it's sort of a win-win situation. This is the only wall in the walled garden that um, we have the bones in. So I, I'm not sure why this wall in particular has them. The bones were primarily used between the 17th and 19th centuries and they are usually sheep bones. I did read an article that in one part of France, in an old abbey, they did discover human bones protruding from the wall. <laughs> so that was a little off-putting and creepy. Um, that was probably a one-off situation, but who, who knows? I did read something else where in the south of France, they discovered chicken bones sticking out of the wall and they were used for trellising as well. But the chicken bones are so tiny. I didn't, I didn't quite understand that. But they also mentioned that the bones could help with drainage. I guess when the water comes off the roof and onto the facade, it sort of runs away from the stone. So that's sort of um, a use as well. I think they were also used to delineate whose garden was, was whose by, by the bones in the wall. But this is a private property, so that wouldn't apply here. And it's certainly an interesting piece of history, even though at first it really creeped me out. And I can see to someone visiting who might not know anything, <laughs> they'd be like, what's going on back here? They made good use out of every part of the animal. So it makes sense because the bones don't rot. There are a couple other bone wall specimens somewhere near us. I haven't visited them. So I'm thinking of maybe putting these to good use again, um, buying some more fruit trees and having them trellis up, up the wall. Uh, I like the way that looks. It's very, very neat and tidy. Yeah, so don't, don't try to steal these bones. All right, so we're on, this is year two. Take two on the garden yeah, beds. That's a good way to... <laughs> yeah, this garden is a big mess this year. I don't have much time to devote to it. We're sort of getting there. It's taking a long time. Yeah. Okay, so the next step is to get the borders, the wooden borders on, which you have cut already, right? Most of them are cut. Um, uh, still a few pieces to cut, but okay. most of them. The twine is just a guide, really because when we actually install them, we need to kind of dig a little trench, you know, put mm -hmm. the wood in, yeah. and we'll line it all up again, basically. But this is at least a guide for where to yeah. dig. This is the first bed we'll add the borders to. Lincoln has already dug a trench all the way around.
Well, the first, the first four beds we did were with wood that we had on the property. It had been cut from, from trees on the property. And the dimensions were kind of odd. So in order to make them all look alike, we needed to get wood made the same dimensions as the wood we already used. So now we're going to paint them. Mm -hmm. And people are probably thinking, what? You're insane. You're going to paint garden beds. But I already painted those, so I, d I wanted to continue the color scheme right. of the garden. And you're, you're just painting the outside. Right? Yeah, we're, we're just painting. This, um, this is untreated wood, which is much more difficult to find. Uh, you can yeah. find these boards in, in a treated wood. It's easy, yeah. but because we have obviously an organic garden and so we're just going to paint the outsides and the tops and then install them. So we only have eight beds to do. Yeah. I went to get my garden gloves and I, I got two right-handed gloves, so <laughs> that's not going to work. Uh, that sort of sums up my whole gardening process this year. It's just a complete and utter clusterfuck. We often head to this beach in the evenings after working long hours. Visiting French beaches often comes with a history lesson. This plaque hangs before you enter one of the tunnels to the water. I hope my translation is correct. I let these beds turn into giant weeds and um, I thought I'd be able to get them all dug up, but it's too time consuming and the invaders this season seem to be the buttercups and they're just so hard to get out and it's impossible. So I've dug up a portion 
and I've given up and I've just gone back to my no dig method, which is just putting the cardboard on top of the existing weeds and then covering with soil and then planting directly on top. This is how all of our beds were created, but you still need to weed. <laughs> so I'm gonna get this one done today, hopefully some, some planting as well, and then continue down the line. So I need to go find my other glove. So we're almost done with um, bed number one of the new season. Right. <laughs> and it's harder than um, harder than it looks. It's there's a lot of digging into heavy clay soil. That's really the the most difficult part. And then getting getting everything lined up properly is really tricky. So we've been out here all day. I'm getting a little punchy. We're all tired, and but I still need to. Um, lay some cardboard down on a couple of beds so that everything stops growing. What else have we done? I planted, I got a, a bed completely cleared today, added soil, compost. There we go. Good. So the day's not over yet. Lincoln's gonna go in in a few minutes. Yeah. He's gonna do animal duty tonight. Feed the menagerie. Yeah. So of course I ran out of soil. I couldn't finish the job, but um, it's it's almost there. So I'm not I'm not that upset. Uh, it's about 7:30 at night. We've been working all day. Um, I'm out here a little later tonight just because I want to <clears throat> tidy up, get things, a couple more things done. Yeah, it's been a long day. But I did get some. I did get some seeds planted, so I'm excited for that. Nobody asked, but I'm going to tell you which garden tools I can't live without. This is, I don't know what that's called, but I love it. These are my clippers. Everybody needs clippers. These are what I also call clippers. Those are my smaller clippers. I love those, those are my favorite. This I call the Weedinator. Uh, it gets out tough weeds and tiny spots. This is my Root Slayer, my absolute favorite tool. I have um, many other tools in, in bigger sizes and they're great. Sunblock, everybody needs sunblock. Garden gloves, uh, if you're like me, you have a million pairs and all of them have holes in them, like this one. Uh, from just digging around in the dirt. So then you need another pair of garden gloves to replace those, but you still end up using the holy ones. And then you need rubber gloves for when it's wet that also have holes in them that I've sort of repaired. And these are my favorite gloves. These cannot be destroyed. Those are also uh, rubber gloves. I love those. And some big giant gloves for when I have to pick brambles.
We pretty much live outside in the summertime, so an umbrella is an absolute must, especially for me, in order to protect my pale, vampire-like complexion. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, and if you have something to say, leave us a comment.